they didn't so they gain. incentivated like yeah. motivated you I, to count the, calo the yeah. calories yeah yeah because they mm. want uh, wanted to um, participate in taking this kind of control that 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 the eating disorder is an expression of um, but I, I just think it made me more sick and if you didn't gain the weight they wanted you to gain they became you know kind of very uh, disappointed in you Mm, and that I is kept, just more pressure. Yeah, and I and I kept saying I, I need a psychologist because I need to to talk about how my mind works and yeah. how I uh, I can can work with that instead of just calories and weight. Yeah. And what was their answer? Uh, that I wasn't allowed before I had a BMI of twenty or something. Uh, but but now, how but, old but were you at the time? I was eighteen, I think. Okay. Nineteen. Uh, so my heart really burns for you know like uh, young girls who, who because they don't have a voice and at yeah. that age they, they're uh, they're admitted to hospitals and to treatment but but they, they don't get most of them I hope it has changed mm -hmm. but I what I have heard it has not that they get to to talk to somebody about okay. what what's going on uh, because it can help yeah. And do you think that only adding this uh, psychological part mm. would would make would have made a difference for you? Yeah, a only, big this, difference, only a this. A big difference. I, I, of course, I needed uh, uh, doctors and, and people to, to to tell me what I actually had to eat for my brain mm -hmm. to function and for yeah. me to to um, uh, be able to have kids and stuff. Uh, but 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 I would have gotten so much better, I think, if I had uh, had a great psychiatrist or. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how long were you in this in this process? I was there for one and a half year, okay. and then I quit. Okay. Uh, were you like in a cent center? I don't know what's yeah, the I was, word. Yeah, I was in a center. Okay. Uh, both That's quite a long time. Individually and and in a group with mm -hmm. other women. Okay. Yeah. How was that experience? Uh, terrible. <laughs> I mm. hated uh, being with uh, other women who who I would rather have been with some who had conquered their eating disorder, who, who could give us hope and uh, tools uh, to, to, to work through this, instead of just poor, miserable. Yeah. Do you feel that also influenced the type yeah. of environment that it was yeah. right, very yeah, negative? Yeah, it almost became a competition sometimes, you know, who is more, who's skinniest, who, mm. who, who don't eat the lunch, uh, stuff like that. That is really not... That is, that, yeah, and no. this was definitely. I I don't really know that much about uh, how Denmark handles eating disorders, mm -hmm. but this was for sure not what I was oh. expecting to hear. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, the topic that you got published. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And after that, how did um, your mm -hmm. your writing evolve? Did you still talk? Was it still a lot based on uh, on this experience? Or yeah, yeah, it was. But but I also learned that especially eating disorders. Um, can be a delicate subject yeah. that, that you should choose with um, a lot of thinking behind mm -hmm. it because I have experienced that a lot of people still think that I'm very sick okay. and kind of wants to help me. Mm. So you have to keep a distance on, uh, on it. So I, I write about it now, but I more put it in a lot of uh, symbolic language and irony and fun to, okay. to, to, to make myself a little bit more Okay. distance from it. Okay, like a coping mechanism. Yeah. 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 And did you get any feedback from your from your writing? Did anyone come to you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I started writing uh, for the newspaper Politik, uh, th their um, chief, uh, their, what's it called in English, their uh, editor, editor. editor uh, was like, yeah, it's really good, keep writing, I, I really want you to write for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started doing that. And, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of private people also contacted me and said thank you for using your voice and your language too. Mm -hmm. So it was mostly a positive feedback? Yeah, or also, also negative, but mostly from men, unfortunately. <laughs> because um, uh, I have heard, which I, I don't think myself, but, but from my husband, that I am considered an attractive woman. And <laughs> when, when, when you are that, then, then you can also People tend to think that you use your look and your something to 
you know, to get the, around. Kind yeah, of. yeah. Uh, because I, I started writing about dating also, mm -hmm. and a lot of men were like, "You can't say that, and you're just a, a bitch." Or mm, yeah, you, you really get some nice. nasty things about, and you write that. Uh, internet. Yeah. I mean, people actually think that obviously in the real life, but internet just gives you the anonymous anonymous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So yeah, and um, so then you change the subject a little bit more to. Yeah to like how was to be a woman in this society and yeah. you wrote about um, dating also. Yeah. Uh, do you want to share some things that uh, you wrote? Did you did you write experiences or was it more thoughts? Uh, both things actually. Okay. Uh, because I uh, I started on uh, on this dating at Tinder, which mm. I think most of you know, and I did it just to make the study, you know, okay. about so it's like a social about, experiment. Yeah. How, how do people do this? Because yeah. for me it was so strange because I had a, a really nice ex-boyfriend that, that I was within four years in in, uh, in high school, and and we met on um, uh, on, a, on a trip to a forest or something with friends. You know, we, we didn't have all of these. I want this uh, a man to have this and this and this to be okay or to to go on a date with him. So yeah. that that um, that upset me. Mm -hmm. That that people were using these kind of meat catalogs to 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 go it on is. a date, you know. It really is because it's so based on the looks, yeah. on the appearance, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. you don't really get yeah. what the person is about. So, exactly. Yeah, I'm super against dating apps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot cool. relate co relate to that. No. And uh, so, what what type of things did you did you write uh, more? Um, in that speci specific yeah. article, yeah, mm -hmm. I wrote that that I that I thought it was it was really ridiculous because you you couldn't um, really sense how a, how a person really is uh, by by just looking at pictures yeah. or or uh, having a text about what people like because in one year you could maybe like something else because we're always yeah. evolving uh, evolving um, and I, and I found it uh, kind of also wrong because it focused so much on the looks. Uh, which says nothing about how charming and lovable a person is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I know that from experience because I went on dates with, with these people uh, who said, oh, I don't know if I can date you again because uh, you don't have a job. And I was like, oh, it, pss, then I really don't want to date you? Bye. You know? yeah. It's like I, I found this kind of this thing ridiculous because it's, it's based on all of the things that I have tried to take my distance from. Yeah. In my whole life, looks, prestige, uh, status. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And how do you how do you do you feel that um, that it is to to date in general in um, mm -hmm. when you were like uh, back then yeah. um, in Denmark. Um. Did you base hard, a lot of your hard. social experiments in the in t on Tinder, or did um, you a little, try yeah. another yeah, a little, other things? A little, but I've I've always um, uh, in, enjoyed meeting uh, men uh, other places than on a date, a classic mm -hmm. date. Yeah. Um, my husband I met because he's a, a musician, and I've been dancing a lot to his music. Uh, so, so I actually met him on a festival in Greece. Mm, uh, that is a really uh, cool it, it story. Was, was not about anything about. We we're just I was uh, smoking a cigarette uh, near the stage, and we we're just like, hey, hey, and just how's the up. weather? And you know, yeah. it was just it was kind of <laughs> chill. And all all of my good uh, relationships, all of the f the relationships I had, where I really grew uh, and had a great experience, were people that I just met and and found charming. Yeah. And uh, and uh, none of my boyfriend has had many money, you know, or anything. As a, it, it, it's never been uh, a criteria for me yeah. that they should sort have a good job thing. or yeah. anything. I, I really don't care. Do they treat me well? Uh, do they have goals themselves? Are they good people? And that's what matters. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. And other than than dating, uh, what other topics were you writing about? A lot about body image, I'm I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, just how uh, how people think women should dress and uh, okay. how it is to to grow up. You know, we have a different image of what kind of clothes and uh, what we should do when we're uh, at becoming adults and responsible versus when we're teenagers and more mm -hmm. playable and. 
uh, I also find the Danish culture kind of judgmental. Mm. If you wear ponytails and you have a, a dress with a lot of flowers, you often get, can get considered as uh, not being serious and yeah. like a child. Yeah, 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 and and yeah, things things like that. Okay, mm. uh, and uh, with with this book, did it started? From something that came from the from when you were uh, you, you were writing in the mm -hmm. on the newspapers mm -hmm. or how was this idea for this book born? Yeah, it was actually because the the, the editor on Politiken uh, wanted me to write uh, in a, a particular kind of way okay. that that I didn't um, identify with anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I I, um, I started focus on uh, more about some other stuff. And, and more about uh, the beauty in life versus uh, the bad things in life or okay. uh, the things you, um, yeah. Uh, so, so, so I started writing my own stories. I, I said, no, thanks, I, I'm not going to write anymore for you, mm -hmm. uh, but thank you. And, um, and I started writing my own stories, which is same topics, but uh, paired with a lot of uh, magic realism and experience from Mm -hmm. from uh, the, the different societies I've been in. Mm -hmm. Har du nogensinde set et rigtig gammelt træsjertol, helt sort af alderdom og skåret ud med snirkler og snoede ornamenter? Præcis sådan et stod der i den gamle, stukloftede stue, da jeg flyttede ind i huset. Træsjertollet var ejet fra en eller andens afdøde oldemor, og ornamenterne var udskåret som snoede snærleblomster, klokkeblomster og orkideer. Det var smukt, men samtidig frygtindgivende, og selvom man ikke kan bruge det ord om et møbel, vil du forstå mig, hvis du så chatollet. I huset inde i den gamle, stukloftede stue er der skygger, som opholder sig på væggene. Jeg lagde først mærke til dem lang tid efter, at jeg havde lagt mærke til alle de mærkværdige møbler, heriblandt det frygtindgivende træsjatol med de snoede snærleblomster. Skyggerne er her altid, og som regel er de rolige, men de bevæger sig meget hurtigt, når de en sjældent gang skyder genvej til værkstedet gennem forgangen. Når jeg sidder inde i den stukloftede stue, spørger skyggerne mig håndelig, om jeg da ikke kan se, at de stadig er her, selvom jeg vasker væggene i vildskab. Jeg vil ikke svare dem. Dels fordi de har ret, og dels fordi det forvolder mig problemer i form af insinuerede beskyldninger om halskitofrene hallucinationer fra mennesker, som overhører mine samtaler med skyggerne. Så det er det slut med. Fordi jeg har udtjent min værnepligt som vanvittigt menneske på psykiatrisk afdeling. Og der vil jeg helst ikke hen igen, for deres mad er omtrent lige så dårlig som deres medicin og deres rigtig mange tv-kanaler, som faktisk kun er DR1, DR2 og Ramachan. Ja, selvom jeg vasker væggene i vildskab, er skyggerne her stadig. Ude i haven, som er fyldt med pærer og æbletræer, giftige tulipaner og alfa, er der vokset et vildt urtebed frem. Herfra samler jeg salvie, som jeg brænder af inde i huset, men det lader desværre heller ikke til, at de lader sig genere af denne latinske lægeurt, cirka lige så lidt som de mange gryder med kogende vand, brun sæbe og grundrens, som jeg slipper ind i stuen for at vaske væggene med. Når jeg sidder i stuen og ignorerer skyggerne, kan jeg mærke tusmarket falde på udenfor, helt uden at kigge på havens mastodontiske græntræ, hvor turtelduerne og det lille æren går til ro. Jeg fornemmer nemlig det tiltagende mørke ved den ulvende kulde i trægulvet under mine fødder. Kulden kryber op på mine skinneben, fugtig og sumpet som gravene. Snart bliver hele min krop gennemsyret af denne ejendommelige kulde, og der kommer nedefra som noget underjordisk, der opsluger alt levende af kød og blod. Så det er helt umuligt at lade være med at skytte sig, selvom sorte stykker træ brænder varmt i ovnen ved siden af det frygtindgivende træsjertol med de snoede snærlebomster. So it's like the same topic but from the positive perspective. More kinda. positive. Ja, yeah, ja. Yeah. It's okay. it's still there's still a lot of darkness in it because mm -hmm. you, you can't have light without darkness, but it's more uh, balanced, I think. Okay. And this this short stories are they com they are completely unrelated to to each other? Uh, <laughs> complicated. <laughs> yeah, it is complicated, but I, I wouldn't say. But but it they 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 treat different kind of topics. But but you sure can. I'm I'm aiming to have you know like a, a red line through them all. 
Okay. So, so that you can see uh, like me in them and, and also that it, it has kind of a starting point and an ending point okay. Okay. Fr from a journey that I've, I've been through. Okay, so it's like um, there's a main character in all of them yeah. or is it more, okay. Yeah, there's a main character in all of them. And, and it's, it's based on, on you and on your experiences. Yes, yes. And is this writing the, how can I explain, like in the fantasy things that we talked about in the, um, about the paintings, yeah. that this is like um, maybe your view of reality, like how you would like it to be, kind of? Yeah, kind of. Is, is yeah. it the same with, with a book, is like an alternative reality where you can kind of decide what, what happens? Is it yeah, like that? Yeah, or? yeah kind of, uh, but it, it's more, um, you know, um, how do you say, uh, a little bit harder, you know, like it, it's more real, okay. Okay. a little bit more real, but, but, but still as you described it, yeah, a little bit like that. Okay, and see. it has this uh, fantasy vibe? Yeah. Uh, Can you describe it? Why did you decide to go for, for fa more fantasy mm -hmm. vibe? Because I think it's, it's, a, it's a really good way to, to uh, express uh, something you have to say. Uh, it, um, uh, if, if you write a story and, and then you, you put yourself in it as a, a big worm, for example, who has uh, something to say, it, 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 it creates uh, some different pictures okay. uh, that gets a little fantasy-like, mm -hmm. but, but still you can put uh, real stuff in it, that's, so it, it, it becomes more whole and, and um, exciting, I think. Okay. When you can sort of paint the pictures with your writing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, is it, do you use this type of things mm. as a metaphor? Yeah. Like, is it, it okay, be. so it's not like the paintings, this is like very well thought, like yeah. uh, it's not yeah. how you feel, yeah. like you put a lot of thought into. Mm -hmm. I've, I put a lot of thought into to, to okay. what I write and and, and uh, it, it, often it has a double meaning. Okay. So if you read it and you're a lot, uh, you're very spiritual, you, you believe in, angels and uh, mm -hmm. the light god or whatever, you, you would think about it as uh, one way. And okay. if you read it uh, as a younger kid uh, with, with you know, different kinds of views on the world, you would consider it different. Mm -hmm. it's so it's like very, double. very broad. Yeah. Um, did you add like a specific target audience? Because you just mentioned a kid and like mm -hmm. someone that is very uh, yeah, spiritual, yeah, yeah. so that's like not related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but I think I would say like from teenagers and, and until um, young adults. Okay. Uh, so it's something that it can be taken lightly if the person will think yeah. like that. Yeah. But if if you want to to uh, really analyze it yeah. and go deeper in it, you can do that. Okay. And okay. so. And how do you treat the, the body image um, mm. subject there? Yeah, um, like an, as an for, example. For, for, for example, in my new book, uh, it has been uh, written uh, during my pregnancy, and uh, right after my my birth, where it was very hard for me to accept the bodily changes mm. that I knew would come, yeah. but it was very hard for me. So I kind of put them in uh, as little stories. Um, but 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 paired with other stuff, okay. so I didn't. So I don't um, bore the reader with you know just one thing. I, uh, I don't like my body because it also <laughs> gets you know. I I, I wrote a, a short story. It, it's called the man with dog, man the man with, with the dog. Uh, that is about um, how I feel about my body uh, after pregnancy and how I I don't like it. But it's also about him, a man with a dog, that, that I met and made a big impression on me. Mm -hmm. and, and then at the end of the story, it, it, it all gets weaved together because the man with the dog has a dog and the dog is very ugly, but he loves it, you know. And I felt ugly, but people mm -hmm. loved me even though I had given birth, especially my husband and my newborn kid, of course. Mm -hmm. So it, it, became, it becomes a metaphor at the end where, where it, it comes together. Okay. Okay, so when you when you were thinking about what, what what you are writing, okay. is there um, a specific topic? At the end, you were like, okay, um, for this I will use mm. this and this and this, or like, how do you plan the um, the writing? Mm. Yeah, like um, what's the process, the creative process? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I, mostly, I do a brainstorm at okay. first, where I just take a big piece of paper and I write. 
uh, words that I, I think uh, um, uh, after pregnancy body, uh, uh, weird experience with men, <laughs> you know, um, okay. uh, 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 yeah, all, all these things. And then I walk a lot and I do a lot of physical work. And while I do that, you okay. know, p things come. And then okay. I, I, I need to go write stuff. Okay. I need to go write stuff all the time. And then it, it, it eventually, and then I go to my computer okay. and weave it together. Um, I'm also curious about this house. Did you make the house? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Very talented. Yeah, thank you. It, it was actually about to be a bird's house. Ah. But, uh, but me, me and my, my husband, we, uh, we said maybe the bird is going to be a bit frightened. Mm. about you know the colors and the eyes and okay. stuff and then I I decided to take this on on the exhibition because I also think that maybe I could do some something for my daughter when she gets yeah, older that is you know, make her make her, and maybe incorporate her mm -hmm. in, in yeah. doing stuff like that this this one is also it's a book uh, if oh, sorry um, <laughs> it, uh, something for a table Ah, okay. So this is made of wood. Yes, I just took it from um, <laughs> yeah from some some trash I found, okay. uh, and I actually love uh, working on different uh, kind of surfaces because it's uh, okay. it's a different experience mm -hmm. uh, when you do it. Okay, uh, and this one just classical canvas I really like because you can um, you can kind of turn it around. You know, if you want to see ah. uh, from this side, you yeah. have kind of a forest guard. And uh, nice. and it it's kind of shimmery also. Yeah. So uh, and with which materials do you usually work with? Uh, I work with uh, acrylic paint and mm -hmm. uh, ink. Okay. And then the Posca pens, uh, and I finish off uh, giving them some sprays so they won't fade in the light. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do, do these paintings have a, a topic? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it does for me now. It, it, it's actually um, uh, something about the love between me and my husband. Uh, after we had <laughs> Daphne, that's uh, our daughter's name. This is me and this is him because I've had some kind of dream sights of him in the forest. Okay. And it's just, so uh, you base a lot uh, these images on your, on your dreams? Yeah. It just comes to you? Yeah, I do. I do. And how do you... Because I personally, I've, I always forget my dreams. I don't remember anything. Yeah. Yeah. How do you? Does it happen also to you? Like, do you have to wake up and like I don't know, mm. do a sketch or like write some notes or something no, like this, no. or just stays? It, it, it just stays. But but it did uh, ever since I uh, I I normally don't believe in in this stuff. But I had some kind of a hypnosis mm. once I was very sick, and okay. then she 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 it got me to see you know like in a different life where I was born and what happened. And ever since I had the, that experience three or four years ago I tend to be able to tap into to, to okay. those dream stuff also in day in daydreaming mm -hmm. and, and remember because then they become images yeah uh, wow that is really interesting yes yeah and uh, this is the one uh, old one I made of it is also the I call her the book witch the book because witch. she's a witch and she holds a book and some <laughs> hieroglyphs yeah. Any particular reason for the aeroglyphs or? No, no, no. no. I'm just. Uh, I've, yeah, well, I've always been fascinated by uh, by other cultures. Yeah. Uh, a lot, actually. I think <laughs> it's uh, it's it's super exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. And then I started experimenting with a, a little bit of a, a different style. Uh, on this, uh, which I just call uh, gato, which is cat. Uh, it's kind of a, a monster. Uh, <laughs> it's a cat, but it's a monster. Take, take shapes in my head <laughs> sometimes when I uh, when I don't have confidence enough, and, and that's a picture of that. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's you know trying to get something out, uh, yeah. and this this one is the only one who is not for sale because it's uh, my daughter. Uh, in it's a, it's a, you know like a, in the stomach painting, yeah. and it's before I knew she was a girl, then I just painted her as a girl. So it means a lot to me. Wow, yeah. that is really sweet. Mm -hmm. And this one is also made from, it's not, uh, it's not canvas, it's also something that I found, some kind of compressed wood, I think. How do you sometimes just go around and try to see something that you can paint on, or yeah. is it a random? Yeah, I, I, I do, because uh, when you don't have a lot of money, it's, uh, it's nice to, to be able to save money on, on new canvases. Yeah. 
How expensive is a canvas? Like, I have no idea, but I, I know painting uh, is expensive. Yeah, but, yeah. but if, if, if you have a good one, then you is one more like it. It can be two hundred. Okay. And yeah, when you also have a lot of uh, to, to have uh, the paint and stuff, yeah. it's uh, yeah. It gets yeah. In general, it gets yeah. it gets very expensive. I can, can and also because I like to keep my art uh, uh, a bit cheaper than normal mm -hmm. because I think that uh, art should be available for everyone. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I actually give people a, a little bit cheaper if they, for example, have kids mm -hmm. or have no money. I say that they yeah. can get it cheaper because uh, it's easy, it's important for everyone to be able to have access. Yeah to something they find nice. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, about the paintings that are not in, on canvas, like, do you do anything particular to like, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know how different it is to work <laughs> in a canvas and like in a piece of wood or something? Mm -hmm. No, um, mm, some, some, some uh, tree has of course to be, um, what's it called, uh, mm. polished mm. before you can do it. Uh, and so some things I've also made where it, I can see that that it, it doesn't look that good when it's just going to be an outside painting. I, okay. I bring it to a party and then they can just have it for uh, for enjoyment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this one is maybe one of the last things I can show you. Uh, it is all very important for me because it shows my pregnancy, uh, oh. but also uh, the shadow of me uh, being anorectic. Uh, and for me, it has been one of the greatest joys to have kids because I don't think I didn't think I was able to. Mm. Because when you uh, are very hard on your body, yeah. you, you can become infertile. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't, and it came as a surprise for me and my husband that I uh, that I could. So this one is also important for me. This yeah, one is kind of psychedelic think. too. I, I think <laughs> it's nice. Notice too. when you when you paint in. Um like when you draw in the in the paper, there's not so much color in in the in no, the background. No. Th th then I would I, li I like to do it more simple. Okay. Uh, because I also like to be able to do different kinds of styles. Mm -hmm. Because if I get auto work, I would say a, a woman who says I, I want um, um, mostly uh, blue and green colors, and I would like to have uh, a lot of things from the forest or something. Then I have to be good at doing that. Okay. Or I want a simple sketch with only five things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, okay. so. How hard is it for you when you have like the specific directives of, from someone? Um, is it, does it help? Does, um, does it make any difference? Mm, no, but I need to have something on the other hand that I can, you know, okay. give my own, then it's okay. Okay. And I always have that because that's the privilege of being an artist who's always a ri also a writer because you have you have, have different things to work on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And what are your plans for the future, just to close? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna keep painting, I'm gonna keep writing, and um, I'm hoping that uh, other opportunities will, will, will come. I'm um, uh, applying for uh, a, a festival that my, my husband is also playing at. They mm. have an art gallery oh, that's in cool. Portugal. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I'm from Portugal. <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, you know, boom? <laughs> yes. Boom, boom yes, festival. Yeah, yeah. Because ah, we that's have really some cool. Color. Yeah, it's a, it's a amazing festival. Yeah, I hope and, it works uh, out. Yeah, and so and I've also been asked to do something in London uh, next year. A small thing, but it's still nice. So. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's it's really good to get the recognition. It is fantastic. Yes. yes. Is there anything else that um, you would like to add? No, I think we've uh, we've had uh, so much lovely talk today. Yes. Yes, then so, thank, thank you. you so much, Emma, thank for you. having us and sharing all of it with My us. My pleasure. That was it for today. Thank you so much for staying with us. See you next time. <laughs>